boom, and we're starting. All right, hello everybody, this is Mr. Fry, and we're gonna be recording um, how to do day two stuff on cake and candle, how to make the candle drop faster and faster, and how to do the collision detection. All right, so here we are with the basics from yesterday. We've got a cake that knows how to get started, sends us to our intro screen, moves around. We've got a balloon that goes back and forth on the top and every two seconds shouts out, drop a candle. And then we've got a candle that hides in the beginning and when it gets drop a candle, it goes to the front, sets up, drops kind of fast right now. I took out the weight so it could be a little faster. You'll see why in a little bit. Um, and basically we've got a game that kind of works, okay? Um, there goes our candle, it's dropping a little bit too fast maybe, but you'll see what happens in a second. Okay, all right, so what we wanna do now is figure out how to make the candle not go at negative 12 the whole time straight down the screen. We want it to start really slow, but then get faster and faster as it drops. So basically, like when you start trying to say what it is you wanna do, well, we wanna keep track of like how fast the candle is going. It's gonna start small and get bigger. All right, so we've done that a couple of times in our game with how long we wait, like in Hunt the Ghost, or with the target practice, how fast something is moving that it starts at one speed and then it changes. And every time we do that, we need a variable. So in order to do this, I'm gonna create a variable. And what is this a variable for? Well, it's a variable for the speed of the candle. So guess what I'm gonna call it? Candle speed, okay? All right, so I made a variable called candle speed. And now think about it. If you are holding a baseball, so imagine you're holding a baseball in your hand, kind of up near your head. Okay, now when you, if you let go of that baseball, it starts off at a speed of zero. Like if you throw it down, it's got some speed, but if you're just holding it in your hand, it's not moving at all. Its speed is zero. When you let go at zero, but what happens is gravity starts acting on the baseball and little by little, it starts going faster and faster. Okay, so we're gonna set candle speed to zero. Every time we drop a candle, we're gonna start off with the candle going at a speed of zero. Like I think this is the balloon, okay? And then it's gonna go zoom and start going fast, okay? All right, now, instead of dropping negative 12 every time, Okay, or negative 10, whatever it is you had it at. What we want to do is we want to use candle speed to tell us how far the candle moves each time. And the reason why we use candle speed to tell us how far the candle moves is because it's going to change. Like the first time candle speed is zero, so this won't even move. And if we just ran this program, like watch it, it drops a candle and it just sits there because it's not moving, okay? It's not changing, it's candle speed isn't getting faster. So what we need to do is change candle speed. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and try it by like negative one. We want a negative number because it's falling down. If it was like a rocket launching, we would change it by positive one, but this is something falling down, so we're gonna go by a negative number. Okay, so now I run this, the candle drops, boom, and there it goes, and that looks pretty good. You can tell it's like getting faster. Um, it's almost too fast, so maybe let's make this like negative 0.7. Let's try that. Okay, and then there we go. That's not quite as fast. It takes a little bit for it to get going super fast. Maybe I'm gonna make it negative 0.6 and we'll just use that to make the game a little bit easier. All right, so that's basically what we needed to do. We wanted to keep track of how fast the candle was moving. And anytime you wanna keep track of something, 
you got something that you want to be able to add to or subtract to, something like that, that you're keeping track of, that's when we make a variable. We called it candle speed so that the name of it helped us know what was going on. The candle speed starts at zero when we first let it go, and then it gets faster and faster each time. And when we change Y by candle speed, this lets it look like it's accelerating or moving faster. All right, so now the last trick we wanna do is know when the candle hits the cake, if it does, okay? All right, so if it hits the cake, well, you already heard the right word in there, if. So I'm gonna go to control and I'm gonna get if, and it says if it's hit the cake. Well, we don't say hit, we say touching. So if the candle is touching the cake. Well, touching is this one in sensing, and it's this first one, and it's not touching mouse pointer. I wanna check if we're touching the cake. All right, so now what should the candle do if it's touching the cake? Well, basically what we've been doing is this idea where we broadcast a message so we can tell everybody what's happening when the candle hits the cake. So it's not just the candle that needs to know what to do, the cake needs to know what to do, and maybe even the balloon knows what to do. So we're gonna make a new message, and the new message is the cake hit the candle. I'm sorry, the candle hit the cake, so we'll call it hit cake, okay? All right, so now, if touching cake, broadcast hit cake. Now the big magic question is where does this go? Well, let's say I put it right in the beginning. Okay, I wanna check right away. So we drop the candle and is it ever gonna be touching the cake? No. And we only do this one time in our setup so it will never, ever, ever be touching the cake and it'll never know we hit it. All right, so that's not the right place to put it. Well, let's say I move it like this, okay, and let's say I put it at the end, okay? Well, once something is hidden, it can never ever have a collision. Hiding makes it so you can't bump into it, so it can't go after the hide. Well, let's say I put it before the hide, like this. Okay, well, so now the candle is at the bottom, and it is possible that the cake could hit the candle, but that's kind of dumb. You don't want to catch the candle down here. What you want is you want the candle to catch when it's up here like this. So what you want to do is every single little bit that the candle drops, you want to check and see if it's touching the cake. So what you want to do is put this if touching the cake right inside here in your main loop. We, here's where we move, here's where we change costumes, where we change how fast we've done. All three of these happen, boom, 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 super fast. And now we're gonna check and see, hey, did I happen to hit the cake this move? If I did, I broadcast hit the cake. All right, so let's think here. What should I do if I hit the cake? Well. First thing I got to do is I got to, when I receive, hit the cake, okay? And when I receive hit cake, basically what the candle should do probably is make some kind of sound. And I already added the sound pop. Remember, if you want to add a sound, you just go to sounds, click on choose a sound, and sure, we'll do that one. Okay, just to show you. So I just clicked on a sound, added it, code, and I'm going to add the sound a bass, a bass, I don't know, whatever. Um, and then basically the other thing that I want to do when the candle hits the cake is I want to hide it. Okay. All right, so that is good. That's what the candle needs to do. For right now, the balloon doesn't need to do anything, but maybe later in our game, will make the balloon start going a little faster with each candle you catch. Something like that. There's lots of different options we could be doing. 
And so we'll see about having the balloon do something later. But the big deal is what should our cake be doing? And I'm gonna move this around just so I can kind of put the new thing up here. So we're gonna go to events and we're gonna get when I receive, I don't want drop a candle, I want hit the cake, okay? So when I receive hit the cake, what does the cake do? Well, remember how we set up the costumes so each costume shows that it caught a candle. So what I wanna do, let me get rid of that little thing there. Um, what I wanna do is basically just go to next costume. I'm gonna go to looks, I'm gonna get next costume like that. And so now let's check out our game. Space bar, here we go. The candle's dropping, it looks all good. And if I catch one, we make our sound effect. It's switching costumes perfectly for me. It's looking like it's catching them. That's kind of great. Um, but it kind of doesn't really understand about like, oh, I finished the level. And you kind of notice it doesn't really know where to put the candle, but that's okay. All right. So what we need to do is after we catch a candle, okay, we've hit the cake, we want to check what costume we're on. We want to see what costume we're on. And if we're on the costume where all five candles are caught, then we want to do kind of the little animation scene where we do big flame. Okay? Now, I'm going to do just an easy version of it. So I'm basically going to check and see which costume I'm on. Okay, so how do I check and see which costume I'm on? So it takes a little bit of practice to say things like the computer wants you to say them. So if I say, what costume am I on? Well, it's like, okay, I'm going to check my costume number. Okay, well, in looks, I know what my costume number is. It's down here. So I could like look at that. But what is it exactly that I want to find out? Well, I want to find out if my costume number is five. Like if it equals five, and now you think, oh, that's right. I know how to do that in Scratch. So I go to my operators, and I get the one that says equals. Equals is like using the word is. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to get my costume number, except I'm actually going to use my costume name and I'm going to use the name of five because I named my costumes to make it really easy. So when it's the costume name of five candles, now I know I'm ready to do that whole big flame thing. All right, so let's do a couple cool things that happens when it's big flame time. All right, first one is I want a good sound effect. Um, I already added the ta-da sound, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the sound for ta-da. Um, I wanna switch costumes and go to the next costume, but to make it even clearer, I'm gonna have it say switch costume to big flame. That just makes it really clear what I'm doing. So I want my big flame costume, okay? And now I wanna wait for maybe like a whole second here. So I get to see that, okay? Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my next costume, or I'm gonna, let's even say switch costume to zero. Okay, so I'm gonna clear it all out. Um, I'm gonna go to the next level. And you think, oh, level? I haven't made a level variable yet. And you think, oh yeah, look at how I'm starting to think like a computer programmer. I want to go to the next level. Well, I need a variable that remembers what level I'm on. So I'm going to make a variable. It's going to be called level, like that. I leave it for all sprites. I say, OK. And now, as a good programmer, I first think, ooh, wait, I've got to tell the game to start the level, but I don't want to set level to zero. You never start a game on level zero. You start a game on level one. And now, when I've beat a level, I want to do change, not candle speed. I want to change level by one. 
and it'll go to my next level. I play a cool sound, I do the costume, I wait for a second, then I switch the costume to be ready for the next one, and I go to the next level, okay? And if I remember, I wanted to add in backdrops. So I'm gonna go ahead and say next backdrop, and then really quick, let's come over here to my backdrops. And then I think I already did it in this game. I added in a backdrop, but let's say this is all I've got is intro and party. To add a new backdrop, just come down here to choose a backdrop and you can pick whatever you want, okay? What would be a funny backdrop? We'll go for the hay field, okay? Blue balloon and a blue sky is a little tricky, but we'll be able to do it, I think. Um, and maybe even what I do is um, when we go to a new level, uh, maybe we'll do something like the balloon is forever gonna like change its costume to basically be like which costume depends on which level it's on. So I'll show you how to do that one tomorrow. All right, where are we at here? 59. So we're basically done. I wanna run this for you so you can see how it works. All right, so I'm gonna catch a candle, boom, plays a little sound for me. And then it goes on to the next one. And you can see I'm on level two now. And then I didn't put in enough new levels, but you get the basic idea of what's going on. All right, folks, so this is the idea of how to do the dropping of the candle. We created a variable candle speed, set it to zero. We change Y by candle speed, and then we change candle speed by a negative little bit, 0.6. We now added in, if touching the cake, broadcast hit cake. And then when we hit the cake, we play a little sound and we hide the candle. And for the cake, when we hit the cake, we switch costumes. We check to see if we got all the way done, if we have beat a level, if we did, we do some fancy level switching stuff. And otherwise, we just keep going on. All right, folks, that is the basics of what we got done for today. I'm